Hello friends, here's another Squiatel list for you. I haven't really gone and delved into other factions besides, let's say, Monsters and Nilfgaard, Squiatel, etc. But last night I was, uh, you know, laying in bed, could not sleep, and I pulled out the old iPad and started messing around. I said, well, maybe Harmony is interesting. Basically, because there are so many playable Squiatel Witchers, maybe that's something that we can kind of bank on. And uh, I came up with this list and sort of played it around with it a little bit on stream today, and it was actually okay. It wasn't so bad. It beat some of the bigger lists out there, and it has 2 capabilities, but you're going to see some uh, some fairly similar, uh, you know, trends to this deck as is with most Squiatel lists, which is bank on movement and go from there. Now, we're gonna, uh, this is operating under Nature's Gift, 15 provisions with the Crystal Skull as your stratagem. We're going to walk through the list, and I'll tell you a little bit about how it plays. All right. We start with the Dryad Enchantress. Now, with Nature's Gift Symbiosis, you're going to want to put Hama Dryads in there. I have one Dryad Enchantress in here because she's fairly versatile, and she does allow you to go ahead and plop some Vitality or give some Armor, depending on how you want her to be used. Protecting Unit gives some Vitality onto a Hama Dryad. There's uh, a myriad of ways that you can use this to protect your units. At four provisions, I think it's fine. Minor Proactivity, it's a dwarf to proc some of those uh, Harmony triggers, but at the same time, it allows you to play it, and if it eats a removal spell fine but uh, if not then it gets to give a two point little boost to a more important card like a hamadryad or a uh you know a, a sentinel or a witcher or god knows what but the the miner has uh, found some good use i do have a pyrotechnician again proactivity depending on what you're playing against uh, you can play this uh, to open up on blue coin in order to go ahead and uh, you know maybe force your opponent into making a non-optimal play uh, because they don't want to slam in with a four-point card. They don't want to open with something that's just going to get blown to bits by a Pyrotech. So I got a one Pyrotech in here. Tempering, it's a nature card. Four provisions can be pop put on top of the Pyrotech for extra uh, beautiful value. Double Dryad's Caress. Again, it's a nature card. That's where the, uh, the symbiosis really pops off with, not to mention Purify with amount of locks going on with Nilfgaard. It's very important uh, to, uh, you know, uh, go ahead and purify and get the locks off of those important engine pieces, but it also gets extra value on your Hamadryad. Trained Hawk. Remember this card? God, this card was so great. It's a little bit of both. You got melee road deal 2 damage, perfectly fine, and range, move something out of the way, like a boat. Uh, that is problematic. Move a defender out of the way if you want, but it's got a harmony, so you'll be able to go ahead and find a little bit of extra value off of this. Uh, it says trained hawk, but it seems to be poorly trained. Or maybe this is what it's trained to do. Uh, attack this guy who's doing awful, uh, you know, Will Smith genie cosplay from Aladdin. It's all good. All right, next up, we've got the Cat Witcher. Again, I love this card. But I hate that it used to be Arcaspore, but we, we, we go past that. Again, I don't need to explain to you why this is a great card. The Adrenaline 4 gets extra value bouncing around. Pair up with Dole Blathana, uh, Blathana Sentry and watch your opponent as they make some terrible choices and add up incorrectly. Bust out your Abacus if you want to make sure that you got all your points where they should be, but your opponent should be doing the same, and it'll create some bad decisions perhaps for them to actually take into account. The Cat Witcher is a very, very good card. Uh, Hamadryad, again, you're playing with Nature's Gift, so you're going to be pairing up those Vitality Ticks with your Hamadryad. Uh, lots of vitality on this. This just offers your opponent something bigger and nastier for them to maybe use some removal on. Uh, don't be surprised if this gets sniped, killed, removed, lifted, God knows what, but this is just a five provision card that's gonna suck up some bigger problems later on. And those bigger problems, um, you know, those bigger removal cards that your opponent might play means that those are now out of the way for your other bigger cards to go ahead and uh, pop off. And we'll get to those a little later. Dolbethan, a century. Talked about how this card got some help. Uh, it's still four strength, but it did get a one point hat that it wears. It just mixes so beautifully with your Viper Witcher. It mixes so beautifully with your Gezras, with your uh, with your Gaetan and everything else. This is such a crucial part. Um, this is going to be, if you are playing against this, this is oftentimes priority number one to remove because this can get out of control very fast. Uh, double rebuke. Um, removing things are important. I don't need to tell you that because you probably have had your own things removed, and I know that I have had them removed as well. But there's enough ways to keep your own stuff alive, but Rebuke is going to be nice. You are creating symbiosis. Uh, little treants are going to be popping out, so the Nature's Rebuke will be getting a little bit of value 
Um, if you don't have a Treant already on the board, uh, it'll create one, and then when they're on the board, it'll give them a little boost of two. So twice Nature's Rebuke. Here's Gaetan, a Witcher, a Scoia'tael Witcher, triggering those Harmony triggers because he is a Witcher. Now, typically, if you're not playing, uh, if you haven't already played Gaetan, you're going to be stacking in the front row with your Blathana in the back row and moving everything over, getting all those delicious boosts that are necessary. Gaetan's going to pop off. This is a good card that you want to, well, I say want to, but you're, you should feel comfortable using early on to uh, win rounds with, uh, win round one. Uh, you know, your opponent will likely see it coming, but this is a very, very valuable card. I really underestimated this card. I still thought it was a good card, but I very, very uh, much underestimated just the impact of this card as a expendable round one threat, a round one swing card. Uh, Triant Boar, lots of Dryads on the board. This is gonna jump forward, jump back, jump forward, jump back. It's gonna have a lot of boost from the Dolbathana. Uh, sentry, so you will have a lot of value with this guy. Uh, you know, pick apart your opponent's board slowly, little by little, and enjoy it. Uh, the Triant board does get a lot of range, a lot of reach. Uh, it's a very, very good card as well. So, uh, yeah, enjoy that. Uh, Fav, again, it's just a tutor, and uh, no need to really go deeper into that. The Fav here is, uh, you know, get what you need, get what you want. Uh, don't be... Don't feel bad if you're using it to pick up like a four provision nature card. If it fits the bill, if it fits the situation, then use it. Frex, good uh, proactive card. First, uh, uh, this is my favorite uh, round one, turn one play. Play it, get a little young dryad on the board. Uh, you can start popping off your nature cards and uh, see as your board slightly starts to flood a bit and then things like Gaetan can uh, pop off, etc. cetera, Frexnet. You want to use your Frex most likely <laughs> excuse me, or favorably onto your Hamadryad. Boost your Hamadryad to six so that you can go ahead and use your Nature's Gift and Nature's Gift it up to eight because six damage is not out of range for a lot of things such as Parasite, such as uh, Gigacock, such as God knows what else, uh, pairing it up with uh, you know, a ping, uh, a Precision Strike ping in a Nature's Gift, etc., etc., etc. Get it out of range of a simplistic answer and put it into a range where it needs to be Heat Waved or Rock Slid. Rock slid, I guess. Rock slided, whatever. Regardless, uh, you know what I'm talking about. All right, shaping nature. This is the next one. It's an echo card, a nature card, and pairs really well with your Hamadry. But again, play it uh, wherever you need to play it. Sometimes, if you're playing against poison, if you're playing against lock, use uh, the uh, boost by six and veil to really get something out of uh, out of uh, harm's way. Let's say uh, if you're playing against a, a list that likes to poison. Veil is going to save you. For instance, if you're playing against, uh, um, uh, sorry, Nilfgaard against Ball, and you're it poisoned one of your bigger creatures, go ahead, lift it, uh, you know, boost it by six, give it Veil, and see if they have a follow up. Uh, Call of the Forest. It's a tutor. It's a nature card. Get what you need. Don't need to really get too deep into this one. Uh, Force Protector. Recycle those nature cards. Get that Rebuke if you need it again. Get that. Uh, Dry its caress to uh, purify, boost, do what you need to do. The Forest Protector is a brilliant, beautiful card. Wonderful, wonderful card. Uh, finally, well, I say finally. Uh, here's Gezras. This is a tank of a card. Uh, this just shreds Lippy decks because Lippy likes to just go ahead and plow into the first front row with a million other cards. And if you can get three or four turns, uh, not even three or four turns, if you get two or three turns of Gezras popping off, if you play him... With four cards in hand, meaning you have three left when you, he, he hits the board, his adrenaline will tick. He bounce, bounces to the front, swipes a uh, massive board, bounces to the back, boosts everybody. Everyone's uh, having a good time at the party. Um, Gezras is a phenomenal card, but don't be surprised if this gets heat waved, it gets killed. It's nice to protect this, if possible. Maybe save one of your nature's uh, gifts or whatever it's called, uh, you know, vitality triggers or vitality charges onto this to get it out of range of one of their more easy peasy. Um, removal options. There's uh, Etne. Uh, you're going to get her all the way down to her Blastoise form, which is, uh, or Ivysaur, I guess, because she's green, and uh, Venusaur. My god, get with it, Flake. All right, uh, she's going to get down to the Ethne Wrath of Broccolon and uh, Veil Symbiosis, etc., etc., etc. This is a good way to sort of populate a board. And uh, with the follow up right after, I'll tell you about it in just a second, but she does create a massive nasty board in just two cards and i'll show you about that in just a sec here but here's waters of broccolot now this is where all of your harmony is going to come by and then you're supposed to be wondering why is this a harmony deck when there's not really a whole lot of harmonious creatures now i started this list with a lot of harmony 
tagged creatures in here. Uh, and then I took them all out because other than the uh, actual hawk, because it wasn't really worth it, frankly. Um, because I, uh, the biggest problem that I find is that it's hard to establish a board against many decks when you're playing one engine at a time, one engine at a time, one engine at a time. So when you're playing this list, this uh, with the symbiosis, with Ethne, you open with Ethne with three bodies, then you play this for an additional two bodies, plus you get a four point tree ant. Now if they all line up and your follow up is Gezras, then you're getting a massive boost on that back row, and it just feels so good. So the reason why I tried this out with the actual Waters of Broccolon in it is because I wanted to be able to pressure and establish a board of two engines in one go that my opponent would not just pick off and pick off. Because if you're just feeding them one at a time, one at a time, one at a time, then they are going to take them out of the game, and then you're going to be struggling. So open Ethne, three bodies. If they deal with one or two of them, fantastic. Follow up. Waters of Broccolon, two bodies plus a tree. So suddenly your board is looking rather healthy. You've got a back row that Gezras can boost rather effectively, and you're going from there. So again, basic strategy here is uh, evaluate how you want to pre press round one. If you feel like you can be aggressive enough in it with just bronzes, play a Hamadryad, a Bothana, play a you know Pyrotech. Uh, there's a lot of cards that you can give up. I would say you want to go into round three with Ethne, Waters of Broccolon and um, uh, and Gezras. If you can go into round three with these this top three, you're in excellent shape. Excellent, excellent, excellent shape. Now, obviously, if you're going into round three with three 12 provision cards, you're in excellent shape. But what I mean is that everything else is rather uh, is is pretty is pretty expendable. Gaeta. Uh, you know, your Hamadryads with all the charges, etc. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, Frexinet, ob obviously you want to use that. Uh, call, Use everything else, man. If it's going to allow you to win round one and then uh, help you sort of either clear out some of your deck and, and, and fix your draws so that you're uh, you're going into the next round with Waters, Etne, and Gezras, you're in a really good shape. There's going to be a few decks that can keep up with that kind of A tempo and be just a massive board presence. So you open Etne, go Waters, you play Gezras, it'll trigger the Waters of Broccolon. Uh, those, uh, even with Dolbothana Sentry, will then trigger your uh, your Harmony, triggers, uh, you know, Triant Boar. You have a lot of things that are gonna trigger afterwards. And then that's why there's not, I don't need many Harmony because really I just wanted to plop down some uh, some extra, uh, extra sauce in here, some extra engines that I can just slam down in two cards. Now, if it was up to me, this is a little side note. I think Waters of Broccoline needs to be cheaper. Um, it's not doing what it used to do. I think it got the nerf and got kind of beaten to the ground because it was getting doubled up with old uh, old leader abilities, old Francesca ability, uh, Mystic Echo, let's say. Now it's no longer the case. So it's nice to see it. Or I, I, I'm liking that I'm including it in this deck. Uh, I did eventually change this deck up uh, to be a little bit more competitive, but I wanted to get, show you the list that used Bro uh, Waters of Broccolon because I, I think that it, it needs a little bit of love. Now again, maybe I'll make a video of cards that I think need to be changed or need to be provisioned or buffed or whatever, but I think that this is certainly one that uh, needs to be revisited. Visited Waters of Broccolon maybe needs a 12, uh, needs a little provision buff. Either way, I'll leave you with a match that I played with this game, so, uh, with this deck, so you guys can see it in action. Yeah, I'm always streaming pretty much every day, except for tomorrow, actually, on the, the Wednesday. I'm taking a day off, a rare day off, but every day after that, catch me twitch.tv slash watchflake or on Twitter at watchflake. Let me know, have you used Waters of Broccolon effectively? Have you been playing Harmony? Uh, let me know, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks so much for tuning in. I love you. Be kind. I'll see you soon. Ooh, Lippy, sound the alarm, friends. We've got a degenerate. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. This is going to be for his hunter douchebag. I gotta take these oak critters out. I don't know if these are actually that great. So they're not gonna, they're not gonna trigger harmony because I'm gonna oh if I play this I'm gonna have a tree on the board because of the symbiosis. So this oak critter could probably be something else. Also, this Call of the Force is going to be for Geta. 
Oh, he's doing old school Lippy. This guy haven't hasn't read the. Uh, this guy didn't read the books yet. <laughs> Us Lippy players can now shamefully flex. Look, I know that not all Lippy players are bad people. I'm just saying that most Lippy players are bad people. I'm allowed to say that. I'm starting to get the flex with this, though, by the flex. The hang of this, though. I'm starting to figure out where, like, the sequencing, what to commit based on the hands I have. I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with this deck. I don't mean to be personal, but I fucking hate NG players. Dude, I will, I will never... I will never shit on somebody for not liking a certain faction or a card or this or that. You're absolutely allowed to hate whatever the hell you want to hate, man. And a lot of the times, I'm going to be fully on board with you. Uh, I love NG because I'm a control player at heart. I'm just a control player. That's what I do. That's why I'm here. To quote Obi-Wan Kenobi. What are good NG decks, by the way? Well, um, a good NG deck right now would be like if you're playing a hyper-thin deck pollution list with Colgrim as your finisher or Colgrim kind of thing like that. That deck is still sort of being sorted out and figured out. But that's definitely one of the ways that you can do it. Uh, that would probably be a good NG list. You could play like an enslave list with uh, with uh, that leans on Masquerade Ball for a round. You really want that to die, don't you? But that's gonna live, which is the amazing to me. If he's doing damage to it, maybe he doesn't have a way to kill it. It's possible. The good news is, is if he kills that, yeah, I'm still alright. Because now, we get Gaeta and win the round. Oh, hey, Gaeta, vas-y, mon homme. Bing, bang, bomb, boom, bing, bang, ding, dang, doom, dong, boom, bang. Swing, swang, swung, swing, swang, swung. Perfect. Away, Gaeta. Away. Gunk and Chuck self mill is the meta. All right, I think we're okay. Pew pew. Best way to counter all the nonsense and ladders lockdown or enslave. Well, enslave is uh is in my one of my favorites. Enslave does a good job against movement lists. All right, we're gonna flip this and this. That's much better. And then we're just gonna go to the next round and call it a day. I need to find my uh, Gezras, though. Your Squaya Tail decks are really interesting. Thank you. I'm trying something new today. I'm trying a little bit of... A uh, little bit of harmony? The thing about the harmony list is, like, with so much control, there's a lot of va inherent value in just playing a card like Bro Water is a Bro Broccolon that slams two engines on the board. So at least something is going to survive, right? I like just being a pain in and I love filling a, de a deck with trash. I mean, the deck pollution, when all these cards from uh, Northern uh, or Nilfgaard were being announced, I was so, so excited about seeing. Um, there's my buddy. All right, there's a lot of good stuff in there that we can go get. Like that. Um, I was so excited to see. Uh, what's the word? I was so excited to see Hyperthin get some help. Card like Colgrim was awesome, and then all the deck pollution little pieces came into uh, into play, like the wi uh, the Witchers that sort of pollute decks with garbage and stuff like that. Like that is cool. And then you see leaders pop in back into uh, prominence. Like everybody, here's and I've I've argued this 
for fucking ever. People who are like, this needs a rework because it's unplayable. It's not that it's unplayable right now, it's that there are not enough supporting cards at the moment. Give it a fucking moment for new cards to come out to support it. People are like, this leader is trash, it's never played. It's not played now. But it'll come into fat into effect. It'll get it'll see something. A card will come out that will give it some fucking love. You just need to fucking relax, is what it is. And people don't do that. People This is gonna be a Ah, oh, why did I go in the front row? I meant to go in the back row. I have nothing to move this shit around. Whoopsie. Which leader is trash? Like, well, for one, and I completely agree, actually, is Invigorate. Invigorate is a pretty bad, uh... Invigorate is pretty bad. And the reason why Invigorate is bad is because... Hold on a second. Let's just do this. The reason why Invigorate is bad is because Invigorate... Most of the effects of Invigor Invigorate are good for bronze cards. So you're either doing it in round one with a full hand, or you're doing it in round three, meaning that if you want to really have a great round three, you need a lot of cards in your hand for Invigorate to take effect, and a lot of those cards need to be bronze cards. And if you're relying on bronze cards to win you games, eh, might not work out for you, bucko. So, it's kind of how that goes. Imprisonment is pretty bad too. Yeah. I mean, imprisonment is okay. See, so he's gonna wish that he didn't do that because now I play this. And he has no answer for it without, like, fucking selling the farm. That's gonna get heat waved. Probably. No! What are you bringing back? A piece of shit card. That's hilarious. Wow. Garbage. Ugh. Oh, garbage.